Well, my name is JP Joffre, and I'm an Argentinian composer, performer, and I'm here to share my, my experience as a performer, composer, artist, and also to introduce this uh, beautiful instrument that is called bandonion. It's a German instrument invented to play religious music in the poor churches of Germany that couldn't afford to have an organ. Once, uh, one of the most particular things about this instrument is the keyboard. And believe it or not, this instrument was very popular in the 1920s, so popular that if you brought it to the beach, uh, it was considered something very cool. Here, you can see some guys in Germany with the bandonia. <laughs> Somehow, the instrument ended up in Argentina, and it became the main voice of tango music. Here you can see uh, one of the most uh, famous orchestras, Aníbal Troilos. You can see Astor Piazzolla when he was very young on the left. There were many orchestras of this kind, and most of these orchestras had five bandonian players in each orchestra. They were very popular. Many people relate this instrument to the accordion, but it's quite different. As I said before, the most particular thing is the uh, keyboard. Every button plays two notes. One note when I open the billows, and the same button when I close, change the pitch. And on my left hand, I have the lower register. As you can hear, also the intervals are always different. So we have to practice four keyboards. Two keyboards opening and two keyboards closing. Of course, I didn't know about this when I first got the bandonia. I don't think I would have gotten into this. Uh, I remember I went to the music store, I bought it, and I took it to my place. I started practicing a little bit, and I went back to the music store two days later, and I wanted to return it because it didn't make any sense to me. It, <laughs> and, and so I remember I told the, the store guy, uh, can I exchange it? Can I exchange it for something else? Or, and the guy told me, I, I told him, I, I don't think it makes any sense to me. Uh, I think it might be broken. So <laughs> the store guy told me, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it, that's how it works. And it's actually too late for a return. Sometimes I wonder if that's why the, the Germans send it to Argentina. <laughs> uh, so well, I had to learn it. Um, after 13 years uh, working with this instrument, I've been in so many places, uh, meet uh, so many incredible artists. Uh, so the biggest lesson uh, is that sometimes mistakes will take you to the best places you never imagined before. That's what happened to me. So. I'm going to go back in time now. When I was 18 years old, almost 19 years old, uh, in Argentina, we had a huge economic crisis. I remember we had uh, five presidents in two weeks. And my mother, yeah, my mother left my country to get a cochlear implant for my young brother, Juan Manuel, who was deaf at that time. And I decided to enter the music school to study composition. In order to study composition, I had to play piano. So I remember when I gave my piano exam, I failed. And they told me uh, I was too old to learn an instrument. So they put me in the music theory class that, uh, well, where I kept learning uh, harmony, contrapoint, orchestration, the stuff that I was already learning in pre-college. Until one day, I was lucky to have a great conversation with a great teacher. Uh, his name is uh, Nestor Longo. I remember we were talking, and he told me, uh, JP, I think uh, college is not for you. And I suggest you to take private lessons and go by your own. I think you're going to be doing great in a few years. But I don't think college is the right fit for you. Uh, I was like, whoa, how can you 
advise someone to, to leave college. I was like, this guy is out of his mind. Um, how I'm gonna get a safe job, how I'm gonna get a diploma. And I was very worried. And I remember that day I, I remember two beautiful quotes that I read on a self-help book when my mother left my country. Uh, the first quote is, what would you do if you were not afraid? And the second quote is, every change in your life brings something good. That's when I realized I was only in college because I was afraid of failing, I was afraid of not having a diploma, I was afraid of not having a safe job. So I decided to follow these advices and I, I left college and I started taking private lessons and I, I got this uh, instrument and I started to practice very hard. I remember I saw my, my sister studying law and uh, she spent four to five hours in college, then four hours reading books. And I, th I thought to myself, well, I'm gonna have to do the same job. So I, had, I tried to s invest uh, eight hours, nine hours every day in music. Um, so one day I was lucky to have an audition with one of the greatest bandoneon masters from Argentina, Mr. Daniel Binelli, who uh, heard me performing and he gave me some great advices and he brought a beautiful recommendation letter. Then I recorded a video of myself of playing some music of Bach, uh, Piazzolla, and I applied for a grant, uh, a grant that I was lucky to get a year later and allowed me to study with another of the greatest bandoneon teachers, Julio Pane. I studied with Julio Pane uh, for three years and I remember, well, I got my first gig and one gig brought another and another and another. And I think I've been, uh, I've been doing pretty okay. This is, I wanna show you now, this is the Taiwan National Concert Hall in concert with an orchestra. This is Korea where we perform with Paquito Rivera, 16 Grammy winner artist that also has recorded my music. And this is Celebrity Series of Boston at Jordan Hall a few years ago. That's a Panama World Music Festival. That's a beautiful article in the New York Times. And I'm still 33 years old and I have a lot to learn, a lot to do, but I don't think I would have done any of this without following these two advices. What would you do if you were not afraid and every change in your life brings something good? So that's my experience. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, we're gonna now play a short uh, performance. Uh, thank you so much. I would like to introduce on the violin Eric Silberger. <laughs> on the double bass Chris Johnson. <laughs> on the piano Pablo Cafisi. <laughs> and on the cello Amy Kang.
Thank you, Larry.